on YouTube. This topic of keto is very important because it helps the metabolism. And when we talk about metabolic health, if you could improve metabolic health, that will help your immune system. That'll help with your energy levels. That'll help with losing some excess weight. That'll help with reversing conditions such as autoimmune diseases, hypothyroidism, even things like insulin resistance and diabetes. What do all of these symptoms have in common, including cancer? Because cancer is a symptom. What do they all have in common? Well, what they have in common is, is that they are all results of an actual problem. There are actually symptoms, and they are all linked to inflammation. They're all linked to mitochondrial dysfunction. I'm going to talk all about that, but what I want for you to do is start posting questions from you. If we're just meeting, hello, my name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of four books. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. I'm here at Keto Camp HQ in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida, where I am born and raised. Our mission here at Keto Camp is to educate and to inspire 1 billion people, to help 1 billion people understand how amazing their body is. I don't know if you knew this, but what sits within your body right now, all a trillion cells inside of your body, is an inner physician, an inner healer. It's the world's greatest healer that you have access to 24-7, 365, seven days a week, that innate intelligence is the name of that healer, and the innate intelligence wants to work for you, but sometimes we have things blocking the innate intelligence. It's like if I hit mute on my mic here, you wouldn't hear me. You'd be frustrated. There's going to be dysfunction. Let's relate that to a symptom you might be experiencing, whether it's fatigue, right? You're tired all day, or you're tired at certain parts of the day. That's a symptom. Maybe you have 30 to 200 extra pounds on your body. That's a symptom. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's insulin resistance, diabetes. Those are all symptoms. They're actually not the problem. They are a result of the problem. How do you take care of these conditions? How do you hear your body? Three easy steps. And I want everybody to write this down in your notes as we get into this Q&A portion. But I want to start here. Three ways to heal your body. Number one, identify the interference. And I got to say, it's usually more than one thing. Number two, Work on removing the interference. I'm going to help you do that today with keto and fasting. Number three, allow your amazing body to heal itself. And it can heal itself. But we don't focus on the symptom. We focus on the cause. If you are overweight right now, that is actually not your problem. I used to be obese, 250 pounds. I never had a weight problem. You don't have a weight problem. Nobody in the history of this world has ever had a weight problem. It's a weight symptom. So we don't look at the body in regards to losing weight as the main focus. We look at the body as getting healthy. And as you get healthy, the weight comes off as a side effect. As you get healthy, the symptoms go away, whether it's insulin resistance, diabetes, etc. Now, the question is, how do you get healthy? I know you're wondering that. Ben, how do you get healthy? It's all about your hormones, your cells, in this entire orchestra taking place in your body. What blocks your body from healing itself, what blocks your innate intelligence from doing its job and getting rid of those symptoms is inflammation. Not acute inflammation, like a sore shoulder from a workout or a sprained ankle. That's inflammation too. That's acute. I'm talking about chronic inflammation. It's also known as inflammaging, like Dr. Mike Mark Hyman says, because it ages you faster. It's also known as fat formation, like my colleague, Dr. Lori, because it leads to weight gain. So we want to focus on reducing inflammation. And as you start sending me your questions, so start keep sending me your questions. I see them coming in. Let's relate the conversation to ketosis. Let's relate the conversation to ancient healing strategies like fasting, carnivore. These are amazing tools that have been around forever. Nothing new about them. They're just new aunts. But these are amazing tools that if you apply it the right way, underline the right way, your body can reduce inflammation. Now, all of a sudden, this amazing orchestra can do its job. So I hope that makes sense. Now, let's get into your questions here. I see some questions. Well, I see Monica from the Bahamas. I was joining us, Keto Camp Academy member. Tanya in DC. 
SG in Belgium. Good to see you. Keto Homestead with Jess. Hey, Jess, good to see you. Zeta says, good morning. Hope everyone is wonderful. Ben, thank you for your advice last week. I did a 36-hour fast, a clean. I listened to your book, Intermittent Fasting, Cheat Sheet on Audible, and it encouraged me. Awesome, Zeta. Congratulations. That's a big accomplishment. 36-hour fast. You got fat loss. Of course, you got autophagy. You got cellular repair. And much. it's also a spiritual thing. I, I believe all disciplines transfer. And when you fast the right way, it's a discipline. And that discipline transfers to other areas of your life. So Zeta, I suspect other areas of your life will now improve because you were dis disciplined to complete the 36-hour fast. And thanks for listening to my fasting book on Audible. If anybody wants to get my fasting book on Audible, give it away for free. Let me just verify the link. It's a short read or a short listen. I read it myself on Audible. This is what's called my intermittent fasting cheat sheet, which has been around since uh, 2018, I released it. It's an hour and three minutes total, but I answer the top 20 questions on fasting and I actually read the book. So if you want to get the book for free, it is freefastingbook.com. goes to the Audible page and you can download it for free, freefastingbook.com. So let me make a banner here. Get my fasting book on Audible for free, head to www.freefastingbook.com. You can download it for free. Audible's allowing me to do it for new users only. So freefastingbook.com. As you look that up, I'm going to answer some more questions here. Does drinking club soda hurt the body? No, if it's just regular unflavored club soda, I wouldn't say it hurts the body. Uh, I like, I love sparkling water. Some of my favorite brands for carbonated water and thank you, Becky, for putting that there. Some of my favorite brands for sp uh, sparkling water at the supermarket is going to be Gerald Steiner. Gerald Steiner is pretty, pretty good. Pellegrino is good. What's the other one I can't think of? Gerald Steiner, Pellegrino, uh, there's another one. But those are two good ones that I, that I go for. Um, so you can go ahead and get that. Fasting has helped me a lot with my Crohn's. That's terrific. I'm happy to hear that. I'm actually doing a lecture in... Park City, Utah, first week of November at the Systemic Formulas Conference. And I'm going to be talking about the relationship between ketones, fasting, and the gut-brain barrier. Because I don't know if you all knew, knew this, but there, uh, there is a connection between the gut and the brain uh, via the vagus nerve. So if your gut, let's rewind this for a second. So if you're having anxiety, if you're having depression, if you're having suicidal thoughts, there's a big link to your gut health. And when we think about gut health, those who have healthy guts and live long, healthy lives have diversity in their gut, meaning different species, different bacteria. Those who have a shortened life have, or, or, or have gut dysbiosis have limited diversity. How you increase diversity, ketones could help for sure. Rotating your foods, keto flexing, going out of keto and in and out, like I teach in my book, Keto Flex, but also fasting is the best way, or I should say one of the best ways to increase diversity in your gut because you stress the gut with fasting. Topo Chico is one of them and Perrier. Thank you so much, Becky. That is correct. Hey, from the UK on TikTok. Good to see you on here. Just looking at some of the YouTube comments here. Um, Alicia, or actually let me go to the one before and then I get to Alicia or actually Tanya's first. Tanya, every time I eat higher amounts of carbs, my hands tingle. Uh, so maybe you're having the wrong types of carbs. I would go for more of the green leafy vegetables or maybe the sweet potatoes, yams, yuca. It could be an insulin response. You might want to check your glucose to see how high it's jacking up from the carbs. But ideally, you want to have healthy carbs. You might want to also Experiment with dihydroberberin before the carbs to see if that helps. Asthma says, how important is it to monitor macros in order to lose weight? We don't like to focus on macros and calories here at Keto Camp. We like to focus on hormones, cell metabolism, and inflammation. I do think there is a time and place for looking at macros. And there's two macros in particular that I would like to pay you to pay attention to. So if you're new to keto, you want to pay attention to your carbohydrate macros and you want to drop gradually drop your total carbohydrate to carbohydrates to below 50 grams for the day 
Uh, and then after two weeks of doing that, if you're in ketosis for two weeks, then you want to focus on protein. And what you want to do is aim to get about 40 to 50 grams at the minimum of uh, animal-based protein at your meal. So those are two things that could help you with uh, to kind of focus on and what you're doing here and keep you structured. But uh, I would focus on also sleep and stress and the type of foods you're eating, because although you might be consuming 50 grams of carbs, which is focused on the macro count, what are the quality of those macros as well? So that's important. Alicia says, wondering if you should keep lowering your carbs or macros as the more weight you lose. I have lost 90 pounds in 16 months. Good job. I'm low carb keto, under 40 grams of carbs per day. Should I adjust or start intermittent fasting? I think you're due for actually, it's the opposite of what you're suggesting. I, I do. It's smart to always mix it up and maybe have some days where you lower the carbs even more, but you're, you're due for getting out of ketosis. I mean, congratulations, first and foremost, 90 pounds in 16 months. That's quite the dedication, and I acknowledge you for that. However, uh, especially because you're a, a woman as well, it's time to get out of ketosis and start flexing. That'll actually help with weight loss. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but think about the number one priority for the body. I want everybody who's watching right now to write this in the comment section after I say it, okay? The number one priority for the body is survival. Type that in the comment section. The innate intelligence, the number one priority for the body is survival. I'll write it down as I take a sip of my, my coffee. And I'm gonna relate this to the conversation of being in ketosis for too long. The number one priority for the body is survival. There we go, I love it. So what does that mean? That means if we are doing ketosis for too long, like 16 months, and you've taught your body to burn fat and only fat for 16 months, the body's going to want to preserve that precious fuel source. I talk about this in my book, Keto Flex. That's right, Arlene. That's right, Sammy. That's right, Alicia. That's right, Tanya. So if you've only been burning fat, the body will slow down fat burning to preserve its precious fuel source. Here's the analogy. Picture yourself in Alaska, let's say you live in Alaska and you it's summertime, it's July and the weather is so nice. It's not cold. It's nice and warm. And you have a cabin. You live in the cabin. But you know, because you've lived in Alaska for many years, that in a few months, it's going to be fall and winter and it's going to be brutally cold. So during the summertime in July at your cabin, you start to scavenge for and look for firewood. And you store as much firewood as possible because you want to be able to burn that firewood when winter rolls around to heat up the cabin and get you through the cold winter months. So compare your firewood to your body fat. Let's say you only found about 10 logs of firewood, which is not a lot to get through several months of cold temperatures. So you have 10 logs of firewood. Now it's fast forward to the winter time. It's freezing, but you only have 10 logs of firewood. What are you going to do to survive? You're going to burn that firewood as slowly as possible in order to get through the cold winter months. Your body does the same thing with your body fat. It'll slow down fat burning to get to preserve its precious fuel source. It's a survival mechanism. Nothing wrong with it. Your body just wants to survive, which goes back to what I just said. The number one priority for the body is survival, the innate intelligence. So how does it do this? It does this in two ways. Number one, the innate intelligence will send a signal to insert water into your cells which can create a slowing of fat burning. And it could create this like dimply fat around your belly. Number two, it could potentially blunt the receptor sites uh, for insulin on your cells to uh, create a higher glucose response for, to, to burn that for fuel. It's a different response than a typical insulin resistance. Uh, it, it's a similar to insulin resistance, but not the same thing. So these are two things that can happen. Now, how do you overcome this or prevent this keto flex day you throw in maybe maybe one day per week where you do a keto flex day i talk about this in my latest book keto flex and for those of you asking me about the audio for this it has been quite the progression recording the audible i'm going to a studio here in miami house of hits miami which is a, a hip-hop artist recording studio and I'll, i'm the only one in there reading my book there's rappers like Buster Rhymes and DMX was there before he passed away. 
And then I'm walking in there with my book like, hey, where is the studio? I like to record my audio book. Anyways, I say that because it's been taking multiple sessions of going back this Saturday to record another three hour block. And hopefully by this January, the book will be available on Audible. But you could get this on paperback and Kindle over at ketoflexbook.com. And I talk about the Keto Flex Day, which is one day per week where you increase your total carbohydrates to 100, 150 grams of healthy carbs, bump up the protein, and what's going on with Instagram? There we go. Bump up the protein and then decrease your fat below 30 grams for the day. No fasting. And that's a good way to remind the body it's not starving and overcome that slowing of the fat loss. So your question, this is a long answer to your question, but your question was, should you drop your carbs lower? Maybe on some days you could do that, but the answer is probably increasing your carbs and changing things up. Yeah, Arlene, Keto Flex Day. Hope that makes sense. The book talks about it more. That's right, Elisa. The number one priority for the body is survival. Is this why after two years of keto, I've not only stopped losing weight, but gained 12 pounds? That is exactly what I'm talking about. And I, I love keto. Don't get me wrong. It's such an amazing tool, but we don't, it's one tool. It's not the only tool. We don't stay in ketosis long term. I teach this to all of my Keto Camp Academy students. They know this. We want to flex in and out because our ancestors, they all, they all did keto, but they didn't do it long term. They flexed in and out. We want to kind of mimic that. So it might be time for that. If you want to learern how to do it, ketoflexbook.com gives you the four pillar structure and there's variations on keto flexing in there. Carol in Palm Coast, Florida. Hello, fellow Floridian. Judy, good to see you. Lois, good to see you. Gail, during 30 days of carnivore, do you suggest any changes to fasting or stick with normal fasting practices? You could stick with normal fasting practices, Gail, but here's what you're going to find. You're going to find that you're less hungry. I did. I was doing a lot of OMAD during my carnivore days because I was just not hungry with all that protein. But you could, to answer your question, you could stick to your regular fasting schedule. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Marianne says, why after losing weight in the first instance of 20 pounds over last Christmas, I put on about 12 pounds, but I cannot lose weight, whatever I do. Marianne, I would recommend what I just shared about keto flexing. Look, I get it. I've been there. I was obese and I kept losing weight and stalling. There's three things guaranteed in life. Okay. Three things that are absolutely certain as a human being on planet earth, would you like to learn these three things? You already know it. Number one, death. Number two, taxes. And number three, a weight loss plateau. If you've hit a weight loss plateau, such as Marion, mix it up. If you're doing keto for a year, get out of ketosis. If you want to stay in ketosis, eat different keto foods. If you're not doing fasting, add in fasting. If you're already doing fasting, change your fasting schedule. If you're not exercising, exercise. If you are exercising, do different exercises. If you're not sleeping well, get better sleep. There's so many things you can do. Mix it up, create a new hormetic stress and the body will adapt, which will be a positive response. If all else fails, come join the Keto Camp Academy. It is the world's greatest online health coaching program where not only do we give you the step-by-step -step system for keto, you also get coaching from me. We do two group coaching calls a month, master classes, challenges. It is just amazing. I got to hang out with many of you Keto Camp Academy members this past weekend in Vegas at the Las Vegas Keto Expo where I just spoke. And I'm happy to say that out of all the amazing speakers that were there, our group, the Keto Camp Academy, represented the largest group at that conference. That's how amazing and dedicated they are. It was so special and it was an amazing time. Uh, ketocampacademy.com. We are offering a 14-day trial for that. Yeah, Gail says, congratulations, Keto, uh, to Alicia Rogers. 90 pounds is incredible. Tanya says, I just joined Keto Academy, but haven't started yet. Let's get you, let's get you started, Tanya. Come on, we got this. Mustafa, do we need to count calories on intermittent fasting? We don't have to, we don't need to count calories on anything. Don't, don't focus on calories. They're a distraction. Focus on inflammation and health. Zipporah, was good to see your beautiful face. It was amazing. Can we drink buttermilk while fasting? Uh, I think buttermilk is just fat, right? There's, if there's protein in there, no, but I'm not sure if there's. Let me, let me Google. Is there protein in butter? 
milk. There is, there is protein in buttermilk. So no, you don't, you don't really want to have that during a fast. Love you, Ben, says Juan and your team. Thank you, Juan. I have a question regarding eating raw meat. Is it safe? What are your thoughts? I'm very curious to know. Thank you. You know, I personally don't eat raw meat. You have to have the enzymes to break it down. So I can't tell you it's safe or not. I would recommend you go check out Dr. Paul Saladino. He's got a lot of videos on, um, on uh, eating raw meat, but I can't speak to it because I don't have any experience with it. And I don't want to give you uh, bad information. What do you think about Thomas DeLauer and what he promotes, says Billy. Thomas is a friend of mine. I love Thomas. I just saw him three days ago in Vegas. We spoke on the same stage. Um, so Thomas is amazing. He's incredible. His YouTube channel is absolutely amazing. Uh, so I love what he promotes. He does his due diligence, and he's also a great human being. Namaste from India. Hello, Rajender. Keep the streak going. Yeah, Jason. Louisville, Kentucky. The streak mean, meaning every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, we're live. You know, today I didn't feel that great, honestly. I woke up and I just kind of felt off. But I'm committed. I'm not, interesting in, I'm not interested in helping you all out. I'm committed. So I'm showing up for you. I had a crazy travel schedule, and I think it's catching up to me today. Gary Glass in Kentucky. Tommy in Toronto. Hey, Tommy. Diane Crawford in the U.K., how long can we stay on keto? I like doing eight to 12 weeks and then we start keto flexing. That is a general rule of thumb. That's how I teach it in my book, Keto Flex, because the goal is to get fat adapted, which means you're burning fat, you're in ketosis. That could take seven to 14 days. But then eventually you want to get keto adapted, which is different. Now your mitochondria prefer ketones and you just enhance your results to another level. That takes <clears throat> eight to 12 weeks of being in ketosis. So at that point, we start flexing to answer your question. Good morning, all. I just started following you. I'm so excited from Jersey Shore. Thank you, Terry, for the follow. Welcome from Jersey Shore. Tatjana from Croatia. I'm not on a keto program, but I'm fasting over two years, doing a 24 schedule, and my half is amazing. I, I And I, lo I lost 25 kilograms in one year. Fasting is beautiful. What God gives to me, namaste, my friend. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. There is a spiritual component to fasting, really, especially if you do longer fast. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So awesome, Tatjana. Thank you for joining from Croatia. I'm here to get back on track. Thankfully, Ben, you are here today. Andrea, I'm here for you. Let's get you back on track. Remember, my friends, it's not about the setback. It's about the get back. We all have setbacks. We all have things that wrenches that are thrown into our life. But it's never about that setback. It's always about the get back. Sometimes setbacks are set ups for something great. As long as you can learn from what happened and make a change and take action. I am a starter. How should I go about it or how should I start? Menka, the, the best thing you can do is get the book Keto Flex for just a few bucks, ketoflexbook.com and uh, follow the four pillar approach. Also my YouTube channel, type in Keto Camp on YouTube, camp with the K and just start watching my YouTube channel. I have a 10 part series on keto there as well for anybody else. Uh, who's not subscribed to my Keto Camp YouTube channel, go subscribe and watch that 10-part series on keto. We also have the Keto Camp podcast, which is, uh, we have over 300 episodes. We release episodes three times a week. So plenty of things for you to do for free. Just ended my three-day fast. I feel great. Tommy Monroe, way to go. I can't go back on not sure why it's mental. Well, Carla, if you're having trouble to mentally get back on track, I would recommend you get clear on your why. When the why is clear, the hows become very, very uh, obvious. Uh, when the why is clear, the how becomes easier. Reasons come before results. So if you're having trouble getting back on track uh, and it's a mental thing, why do you want to get healthy? Why do you want to get back on track? It's not as superficial as just losing weight. Like, Where is it showing up in your life? Get clear on your why. And that will help you make a better decision. I am drinking some hydrogen water with, uh, what is it called? It's like a cytoimmune thing, an immune booster. Cyto, uh, KetoCampSelfMints.com, cytoimmune, something like that. So I'm just drinking like some immune support. 
Do you have an agent in the Caribbean? No, I don't. Just started my keto two days ago. Like the keto camp. Let's go, Lanouche. What are your thoughts on spelt flour? Spelt flour. Let me look that up. Is there gluten in it? Let's see. Okay, it contains gluten, so I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I would stay away from it. Coconut flour is better. Cassava flour is better. Almond flour would be better than spelt flour. How do you? How about exogenous ketones? Do you recommend them? There's a time and place for them, but I don't like to rely on them. I don't take them long term. Uh, there's some research that suggests, and I was just talking to my colleague, Dr. Ryan Lowry, over the weekend. We spoke together in Vegas. He has the book, The Ketogenic Bible, uh, ketogenic.com, and uh, he was sharing some research how exogenous ketones could help chemotherapy be more efficient and be and protective for those going through chemo, which is could be harmful to the immune system. That could be a time and place to use it. It could it could help as a brain performance hack. Maybe just some radiation exposure from like x-rays, like traveling on an airplane, I would take it, but I don't like to rely on them. Hey, Dory, good to see you on here. Let me get to some more questions here. Does keto help ADHD? So that's a, that's a good question. Yes, it can, because the brain, which is mostly fat, the brain loves ketones. And if you can get ketones to the brain, it can only help you make better decisions and help you focus. Also, fasting helps boost BDNF, which can help with potentially with ADHD, but also I interviewed a gentleman on my Keto Camp podcast, Dr. Michael Platt, two weeks ago, and he was talking about the relationship between adrenaline, adrenaline dominance and ADHD and how taking exogenous progesterone, he sent me some like this, could actually help with ADHD. So go to ketocamppodcast.com or just like type in Keto Camp podcast and Dr. Michael Platt if you want to learn more about that. How much is it? How much is it to join the Keto Camp Academy? The current price is ninety-seven dollars per month. You could opt out anytime, no um, penalties. But we are also offering a fourteen-day free trial over at KetoCampAcademy.com. Urban Spice Kitchen, good to see you on here. How do you, how do you know you're fat adapted, and how long does it take after eating carbs? Um, you could know if you're fat adapted. If you want to test, you could learn if you're fat adapted by just checking your blood glucose and ketones. If you're 0.5 or higher, which is answering your question, Kristen, if you're 0.5 or higher on your blood, you're fat adapted, you're in ketosis. You could do that in seven to 14 days. Um, what are your thoughts on spelt flour? I already answered that. Not a fan. Thanks, Ben. I agree. I'm less hungry on carnivore hour 40 of a fast right now, and I'm not real hungry. Good job, Gail. Wait to get it. Thank you, Alina. Good to see you and your husband, Steve, over the weekend. If I'm on a regular diet, how many carbs can I consume a day to the point of my needs? Basically, I don't want to store fat uh, under 10% body fat. You, if you don't want to do keto, um, you could do a paleo, so 100 to 150 grams of carbs. What do you suggest to deal with hair loss? I, I recommend you go on my YouTube channel. So go to just youtube.com, type in keto camp hair loss camp with the K keto camp hair loss. I have an entire video on that thyroid health, increase your protein, B vitamins, collagen, et cetera. There's a few things you can do. Can't wait to listen to your podcast on sleeping position. It was great. Um, Victor, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. When do you test your ketones before you break your fast? Yes. Test your ketones an hour after you wake up and right before you break your fast. Those are good times to test. Hey, Dan in Atlanta. Yep, Dina Thomas is a cool, cool dude. I'm not sure what's happening on Instagram, but the connection keeps going out, but I'm back. Uh, my dad has done keto for six years now. He has just realized that he has kidney stones, and the doc told him it's from keto. I'm planning to start the keto diet, so is it possible I will get it too? I think six, six years in ketosis is too long. We want to flex in and out. I don't know if it was the keto that did it to him. Um, I would just say if you practice a flexing approach and focus on reducing inflammation, it'll really limit your chances of getting it. Just got your book, Ben. It's a great read. Thank you, Dina. Good to see you. Trying to get back on keto. We got this, Dina. Come on. 
Lisa Trotner, which keto foods are good for raising hemoglobin levels? Yeah, so if you have low iron, which cycling women typically do, here are a few ways to raise your iron. Red meat, so heme iron and red meat, terrific. Um, you could get it from vegetables, but you have to really, if you're going to have, if you want to get iron from vegetables, like green leafy vegetables, combine it with vitamin C to increase the absorption. I also like uh, energy bits, great way to increase your iron. Cooking in a cast iron skillet, great way to increase your, increase your iron. These are a few things you can do. Thomas is great. Thomas DeLauer is great. Absolutely. Hey, for those of you on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button. If we're getting any value from this video, let the YouTube algorithm know you're getting value from this. Thumbs up button here on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We release videos every week. We're live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Nisha, what do you think about carb cycling? One day high carb, one day high fat. I love carb cycling. I wrote a book all about it called Keto Flexing, but I don't do it that way, which is one day at a time. I have more of a strategic approach to it. So I think it's great if you do it the right way. I don't know if I like a high fat, high carb, back to back for too long sort of deal. So um, I would structure it differently. In the book, I have different rules on how to structure it. Can I do sugar alcohols? Yes, in moderation. Uh, erythritol and xylitol are totally fine. Vitamin B12 and vitamin D deficiency. Those are both very common. I would take uh, supplementation with a B complex that has all the B vitamins, not just B12. And then also a vitamin D with all the fat soluble vitamins, not just vitamin D. So if you go to ketocampsupplements.com, Systemic Formulas has a great B complex called B16, B16. And then they have one for vitamin D called DV3. So ketocampsupplements.com, DV3, and B16. Can I make muscle can I, on keto and fasting? Yes, because ketones are muscle sparing. And if you do fasting, it's human growth hormone. So as long as you eat enough protein, get enough sleep, recover and lift weights, you can definitely do it. The protein sparing approach is cycling in days where you have low protein and then higher protein. Uh, I did interview Craig Emmerich and Maria Emmerich on my Keto Camp podcast where we talked about it. I think it's a great tool. So... Um, you just have days where you really decrease protein and then days where you increase protein. It's really a great way to mix things up. Does stevia break a fast and stop autophagy? It should not. You could always test your glucose, Julie, see if there's a rise, but it should not. Hello, Ben. You have always been talking about ketosis. There's a friend of mine who went to the hospital and the doctor said that he had gone into ketoacidosis. What is the meaning of that? Now, ketoacidosis, ketoacidosis is really only a, um, a concern for those who are type 1 diabetic. So I don't know if your friend was type 1 diabetic. That's when your ketones, your blood ketones are over 15. I have never seen that ever before. And when I have heard of it, it's only been in type 1 diabetic. So if you're type 1 diabetic, you always want to make sure you monitor your glucose and ketones. As soon as your ketones go above 8, you got to change something up. But 15 is ketoacidosis and higher, which is a problem. It could be potentially deadly, uh, but it's only a concern with, for type 1 diabetics. Do you recommend drinking two liters of water? What is the best time to take a multivitamin? For water, I don't recommend drinking two liters. You drink when you're thirsty and make sure your urine is mostly clear and make sure you're drinking quality water. Best time to take a multivitamin is with your meal. Angelie says, I follow your videos and podcasts. You bring so much great information. And after following you, I feel healthier internally, though I have lost weight too. Let's go. Congratulations, Anjali. Can you, a type one do keto? Yes, but you have to monitor your numbers. I wrote about David, who's a Keto Camp Academy member in my book, Keto Flex. He's a success story, type one diabetic. You could do it the right way. And what it will do for you is just make you less dependent on insulin. So if we're taking insulin, Six times a day because you're type 1 diabetic, doing keto the right way could take it down to two or three times. So it'll improve your quality of life. Keto rash, you want to increase your protein, eat more bitters, and maybe explore a detoxification approach. That could be it. 
Monica says, I lost 120 pounds on keto. Now I'm flexing. I love it. And now I'm recommending flexing to all my clients. Let's go, Monica. Congratulations. And thank you for doing that. I find the 48 pretty much difficult mentally. What would 224 hour, hours do in a flex? That's another option as well. Uh, 224 hour fast, many benefits to that. Now, 48 hour fast will get you more autophagy, more fat loss. But a 224 hour fast, also terrific. A lot of it is mental, so you might want to keep yourself busy and occupied when you feel hungry and let that hunger wave pass. Does bone broth kick you out of ketosis? No, it should not kick you out of ketosis. I'm going to answer a few more, and then I'm going to sign off here. Or type 2, if taking some of those newer drugs that seem to cause ketoacidosis, they don't know why. Yeah, if you have diabetes 1 or 2, it's, oh, it's really important to monitor your glucose and ketones on a consistent basis. You know, In general, you don't want to see your ketones above 8.0 in the blood, and you don't want to see your glucose drop below 50. Uh, those are very, very important markers. We talk about that in the academy. For those of you who missed out, uh, I was in Vegas this past weekend. The recordings are going to be available for free. If you go to ketogenic.com slash LV keto, ketogenic.com slash LV keto, you can watch the recordings. Uh, um, Ryan Lowry put it together. So I'm going to thank you, Victor, for the badge, my friend. I'm going to put the, the link here in YouTube stream, but ketogenic.com slash LV keto. If you want to get those recordings for free from the Las Vegas keto expo, we were just at Angela. Good to see you on here, Victor. I appreciate your, the badge. How can I tell if my fish oil is rancid? It doesn't seem fishy when I break open a capsule. Well, if you get fish burp after you consume it, that's a sign, but 83% of fish oil is rancid. Even if it's the best fish oil, it could turn rancid when it mixes with your body temperature, and stomach acid. So I'm not a fan of any fish oil at all. I don't like fish oil. I like pure form as a plant-based alternative, which actually helps your body make its own fish oil. Your body can do that with none of the side effects from fish oil. So ketocampsupplements.com, pure form is what I use. Hey, I want to thank you all for joining me again for another successful live stream. Join me again next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Again, if you want to get my fasting book, for free on Audible where I read it to you. It's just an hour long and I answer the top 20 questions on fasting. Go to freefastingbook.com. I also encourage you to go subscribe to our Keto Camp podcast available on all pl podcast platforms worldwide. Subscribe to our Keto Camp YouTube channel at the Benazadi on TikTok, at the Benazadi on Instagram. We're on all of the social media platforms and I wanna say I'm so grateful that you joined me today. Thank you so much. Stay in gratitude, stay in love. And I'm grateful for you all. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, TikTok. Um, constipation, go on my YouTube channel, youtube.com, or just go youtube.com, type in Keto Camp Constipation.